Hey everyone, welcome to Rasayan Academy, all of you guys. So in this video, we are going to start practicing the questions from 2014. All right, so June 2014 and December 2014, important questions on name reaction. All right, so let's uh, quickly see question number one, guys. This is question number one. What you have to do is stop the video and try this question by yourself. So first thing, the correct combination of reagents to affect the following conversion is. Now, as you can see over here, what is the change in the molecule? The change is the ketone group is converted to an alkene and also on the same carbon you have a carboxylic acid. You have done questions like these before, so try this out by yourself. Okay, and I'll just finally tell you the answer. Alright, so I hope that you have done it. So the answer is option number C and the name reaction is a Shapiro reaction once again. Alright, so how does the reaction proceed? Let's see quickly. Alright guys, this is a very important reaction. Multiple times it has been asked in your previous years. Okay, okay. so first thing, the tosyl hydrazine is going to give you on this uh, molecule, the tosyl hydrazine is going to give you this reaction. You will form the tosyl hydrazine in this way rest of the molecule will be as it is no change in the molecule right so now in the presence of a base and once again you are getting the butyl lithium and two equivalent of that okay so you will say two equivalents only two spaces where you can remove the proton only two position the NH proton is more acidic and the carbon proton also all right the alpha proton over here so how the molecule going to be very simple the molecule is first of all, if this proton is removed, so first of all it is going to eliminate the TS group, minus TS, the molecule is going to look like this, double bond N. And since one more proton on the uh, nitrogen was removed, it is going to be N minus Li plus, okay. So the minus charge in the next step, it is going to break this molecule down and <clears throat> you are going to get a negative charge on the alkene carbon. Just like what you usually do in the Shapiro reaction, you are going to get a negative charge on the alkene carbon. Okay, the hydrogens are still above, rest of the molecule is as it is. Now you want to form a carboxylic acid, for that you don't need DMF, because if the attack takes place on DMF, you have seen in the previous video that the DMF is only going to transfer this formyl group, not the acid, and then we also don't have any oxidizing agent. So it is directly going to attack on the carbon dioxide molecule that gives you the carboxylate. All right, that gives you the carboxylate COO minus, which on hydrolysis is going to give you this molecule. So, our correct answer is correct set of reagents is option number C, and this is based on the Shapiro reaction. Okay, June 2014 question. Let's move onwards to question number two. The second name reaction asked in June 2014 once again. All right, same year. The organoborane X, X given over here, when reacted with diethyl zinc, followed by para iodotoluene in the presence of a catalytic amount of palladium in the zero oxidation state, furnishes a tri substituted alkene. The intermediate and the product of the reaction respectively are. So, what do you see over here? You are having ethyl zinc. So, this molecule, first of all, is undergoing transmetallation. This is going to undergo transmetallation like this, okay, which will further react with para iodotoluene. Now, whenever you say para iodotoluene, it is an aromatic halide. In the presence of palladium, zero oxidation state, it is uh, zero over here, right? It is going to undergo oxidative addition in between the palladium and the, uh, in between the carbon and the iodine bond. This is what you have. All right, this is your new species. Now, both of these are going to do transmetallation with each other, yes? And the carbon, this carbon now connects to palladium, which already has this group. So, what is the mechanism of these kind of coupling reactions? Coupling reaction here, it is the Negishi reaction, Negishi coupling. How do we know? 
because there is organo zinc compound being used. So Negishi coupling, how do we do the coupling? First of all, oxidative addition of palladium zero in the carbon iodine bond like this. Second is the transmetallation. Transmetallation step with your zinc over here, organo zinc compound. And third is the reductive elimination. So the bond connectivity is going to be as it is. Now it is really important that you uh, identify this properly. Okay, you might get confused in all the options. Different structures are given. But if you just directly follow that these two methyl groups or the ethyl groups as you can see, the, they are cis to each other. Okay, so these two ethyl groups are supposed to be cis to each other and just write zinc over here. Alright, so where there was zinc on the same carbon you are going to get, where there was uh, zinc on the same carbon you are going to get. The connectivity from the iodotoluene, para iodotoluene, like this. Okay, so just keep this in mind. Both of the ethyl groups are supposed to be on the same side. Here, you don't even have the ethyl one methyl, one ethyl, absolutely wrong. Here, two ethyls are trans, so this is also wrong. Here, once again, the ethyls are trans, once again, wrong. Both the ethyls are on the same side, this is right, and here the connectivity with the zinc you are going to get para iodotoluene just connected from the same side. So it is option number D. Stereo specific and regio specific reactions, uh, coupling reaction, and this is the process. It is Negishi coupling because it is using the organo zinc compound. Very well, let's. Alright, guys, question number three, and this is also from June 2014. Very simple question once again. The correct combination of reagents required to affect the following conversion is okay. So in this molecule, you see you are in this question, you see you are going to have a diester. Diester may we are reacting the we are reacting something to the diester that it forms a four-member ring. Very easy to identify. This is a radical reaction. Alright. So we will first have the sodium and xylene is just a solvent, nothing else. Alright, so first we have the sodium and xylene. So let's say the sodium is providing electrons. Sodium is providing electrons to this carbonyl from both the sides. So let's say you are having the O- minus on this side and OCH3 this way. O minus and OCH3. In this way, you are having two radicals. So these radicals are going to connect. You have O minus, OCH3, once again O minus and OCH3, like this. O minus is going to fall back in this way, and both of the methoxy groups are being eliminated. You have once again a diketo compound. Alright, the ring is going to be strained, but uh, since the product is like this, we have to explain what's going on. Once again, sodium is going to give electron to both of these carbons. It is going to open up in this way. O minus, O minus, let's say I've written both the oxygens like this. And there will be one one radical on both of the carbonyls. Since there are radicals, they are going to join and form a double bond. And the negative charges are stabilized by trimethylsilyl chloride. So it's going to have a huge affinity for silicon. That's why SiMe3 group is going to connect. Alright. So this will be the product of the reaction until and unless you are hydrolyzing. So when you hydrolyze, when you hydrolyze, you have, uh, let's say, one double bond O over here and one OH. Or basically, when you hydrolyze, first thing that you are going to get is a diphenol system in this way. All right, and then it is going to tautomerize. Let's consider only one of them as the enol form. So let's say this tautomerizes this part, and the other part is hydroxy group only. So this is alpha hydroxy carbonyl, and the whole reaction is a siloin condensation, a siloin reaction. Okay, it is a radical reaction process, very, very simple reaction. Answer is option number one. You can just check this out once again, very simple. What about question number four? The major product formed in the following reaction is so you see, 
it's another very direct question what happens in the presence of tscl and pyridine so tocyl chloride this group tocyl chloride is going to convert the ots uh, oh into ots protection of the uh, alcohol in the presence of pyridine right very simple now what happens is once the tocyl is leaving because tocyl this this reaction is driven by the uh, release in the strain because the molecule is strained and the tocyl is a tocylate is a big leaving group OTS minus it is a bulky leaving group so it is going to leave and we write the molecule as it is we are writing the molecule as it is there is a positive charge on this carbon so any one of these groups they are having a greater migratory aptitude that is going to migrate so if this group has migrated Guys, I deliberately write the molecule in the same way as it originally was because then only you will be able to realize what is the change in the molecule and you don't have to do the numbering that way. It is not necessary to do the numbering. See, this carbon-carbon uh, bond has just shifted and migrated on the adjacent carbon in this. So, now you see that this molecule and this molecule are absolutely the same, isn't it? Yes, isn't it? Now, sorry, the positive charge is going to be on this carbon, on the adjacent one, this one. Okay? What just happened? Carbon-carbon bond migration. There will be two carbons in between over here. One of them has a positive charge. And other side also only two carbons you are going to have in between. Okay. So this is the same ring. Now here the let's say the OTS again attacks. OTS minus is attacking again. Where is it going to attack? Above or below? The exo product or the endo product. The endo product is going to be the major product because of this canopy of methyls over here. Because of these bulky methyl groups. Alright, the nucleophile cannot attack from above. Okay. So your answer is option number B. Similarly, let's do one more question, guys. This question is question number 5 from December 2014. So, few questions on name reaction in December 2014. Most of them were. Uh, direct uh, organic reagent, different different organic reagents, very few name reactions, right? Okay, so the product for the following sequence of reaction is first of all, what do you see over here? Just break down the reagents, you will be able to do it by yourself. Okay, so there is a positive charge on this phosphorus and in the next step you have a base. What is this base going to do? Base is going to remove a proton from this system. Yes, yeah, so this is your elide which is which is formed. So the elide is now going to attack the carbonyl H O M E O E T whole thrice. Alright, you can also write it as a double bond or just the negative charge density. This is how the reaction is taking place. Alright. The attack over this carbonyl. Okay. So the Reaction is nothing but your Wittig reaction, and the Wittig reaction is going to give you CHOME molecule that is vinyl ether. It is going to give you methyl and vinyl ether. Okay, last step is the hydration of the methyl vinyl ether. So, in the presence of H, what happens is this methoxy group this is going to this is going to grab the proton from here.
and become like this. There will be a methyl oxygen has a positive charge. Now water is going to attack the methyl. Forms methanol separately and this is your major product. Alright. This is the major product of your question number uh, 5. Very very simple. The reaction is Wittig reaction only. But a little bit different. Alright. Yes. Let's do another very simple question. Question number 6. Major product of the following reaction is. So guys as you see. Uh, sodium in liquid ammonia ethanol. Uh, once again. You know the reaction is very simple. However the selectivity is a little bit difficult. Yes. So towards the alkyne. The alkyne molecule is going to be converted to trans alkene. Why is that so? Because it forms a radical anion that has to stay as far apart as possible. Okay. This is going to be converted to trans alkene. But what about the benzoic acid system? Alright. So to the benzoic acid, the electrons will be added in such a way. See guys, whenever you are getting an electron withdrawing group on the ring, you always know that you have to take the negative charge into the electron withdrawing system. Which means if the electron falls up like this, then the electron density must always go into the carbonyl. So this is supposed to be the direction. Okay, it's going to go in this direction. It is going to be C, O minus and stuff like that. I am just directly writing what I need. I need a negative charge over here. Okay, I need a negative charge over here. So this is how the electron flow is going to go always. And here it is simple reduction. Nothing else. No methyl iodide. Nothing is added. So just both of these sides are going to get protonated. Your answer will be option number A. Very very simple. But in your gate question what happens is. In your gate question, instead of writing H3O plus, I could have written methyl iodide. Okay, in that case, this carbon will attack the methyl group and here only you are going to get the methyl attached. Okay, any other electrophile which is attached. Okay, so yeah, this is what you have about the Birch reduction. Okay, chalo, we move onwards. Alright, let's also discuss these wrong questions for once. Yeah, this is uh, wrong because the bond is alkene bond is cis. Wrong for the same reason. Now this is wrong because the electron withdrawing group whenever it is present it is not going to attach in this way. The benzene part is wrong. Okay. Chalo then. Let's move on to question number 7. And the question that I found over here was based on photochemistry. The major product of the following reaction is. In the presence of light and a little bit of acid. So what are you doing over here? Yeah, you have the N halogen amine. N chloroamine, right? So in the presence of acid, first of all, it becomes like this. Nitrogen gives its electron density to a proton. Then it becomes, it has a positive charge over here. The positive charge. Alright, then the positive charge is going to be as it is the Cl, the N and the Cl bond breaks down. You have cation because of the lost lone pair and this radical because of the Cl. Okay, so yes, this is what you have and the rest of the molecule is as it is. Okay, now what guys, you have one hydrogen connected to the nitrogen and you have a uh, Yes, a radical over here. So, alpha, beta, gamma and delta. From this methyl. From this methyl, there is going to be a hydrogen abstraction. It is going to become CH2. This is going to become NH2. Radical cation in this way. And the CH2, which is, a, which is still a radical, this is going to get the chloro. So what is this reaction? This is the hoffman loeffler freytag reaction. In this reaction you are doing the remote functionalization that is on the delta carbon. 
देखो अल्फा बीटा है गामा है एंड डेल्टा ऑन द डेल्टा कार्बन यू आर गोइंग टू प्लेस दी क्लोरिन या फिर विच एवर लिविंग विच एवर फंक्शनल ग्रुप इज प्रेजेंट ऑलवेज द रिएक्शन इज गोइंग टू स्टॉप एट दिस अंटिल एंड अनलेस यू आर एडिंग अ बेस सो वेन यू एड अ बेस गाइज वेन एवर यू एड अ बेस The NH2 becomes free. It becomes NH. So now it is free to attack this uh, carbon, remove the Cl minus, and give you a five-member ring in this way. All right. So the ring is very easy to identify. A is your correct answer. All right. And the rest of the molecule will be as it is. Since it is a five-member ring only, it has to form. It has no other option. it has to form the cis uh, junction from here okay this is the junction of three ring so yes a is your correct answer hoffman law tag yeah right so guys we have done seven good questions today uh, from your june 2014 and december 2014 question paper more questions like these are coming for it also if you have not subscribed to the channel please do bye everyone